So, Mike, not only did you have a lot of success in the NHL, but you were also an NCAA champion where you won the Frozen Four. Uh, and then you had a chance to play for Team Canada at the World Championship as, as well. So tell us a little bit about those experiences. Yeah, they were both great. I mean, I was fortunate enough. I, I would never say I was, I was far from the greatest player around, but I was fortunate enough to be on, on, on good teams. Uh, in college, you know, I, I played for the Fort Saskatchewan Traders for a year, and then I was going to go to the WHL like everybody else around here. And long story really short, um, I went on a fly down. I didn't even really know what I was doing. I didn't know anything about the university. I didn't know anything about college hockey, period. Never seen a game, had no clue what it was. The only reason why I went down on the fly down was because it was a trip to the United States uh, without my parents. And I was, I think I just turned 17 years old. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'm going on this. Um, and so went on the fly down and I, I was just blown away. It was, you know, there, there's way less games and the, not way less games. So there's way more interest, if that kind of makes sense. We're right on a college campus, 6,500 people, students, everybody's having a really good time. Uh, so I went down there and I'm like, I'm in. Uh, so went down there really to, to go to school with no, pro hockey hadn't even crossed my mind. Like I didn't think I was pro material. It, it literally didn't cross my mind. and. Ended up having a pretty good three years there. In the third year, we ended up winning, um, which was kind of out of the blue because we lost a bunch of uh, seniors the year before, and that was kind of the year that I thought we probably weren't going to be very good, but we had a bunch of older freshmen that came in. And So anyways, that was fun, and then I turned pro. Uh, and the Team Canada thing was awesome. You know, that's that was something I, I really didn't expect. Um, once again, it was just good timing. It was 07, so right after we had won in 06, so I was, my name was out there a little bit, and I was playing fairly well. Um, and yeah, it was a, you know, I was, I knew I was, I'm never going to be an Olympic player for, was, I'm from the wrong country with my skill set. Uh, so the, getting a call from Steve, Steve Eiserman about the, the world championships was awesome. I think the only reason why I really went was because the tournament was in Moscow. And I think he probably was going down the list of defensemen calling, you want to come, you want to come? And went, no, no, no. And finally it got down to my depth. Uh, and I was all in, I could care less where the games were being played. It, it was my only chance to, I knew that was probably going to be my only chance, uh, to play for my uh, country, so it was it was fun. We went there. Right? People were kind of car like, who are these guys? We didn't really have like any big big names. You know, there weren't really cross. We had really good players, but and we went nine and zero and won the whole thing. So it was fun. NCAA Worlds, NHL, KHL. I know that you have KHL. a funny story about signing in the KHL. If you'll share that with us. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew I wanted to. You know, there was the half lockout year, and I, I played in the American League a little bit, and I knew. You know, my time was up here. I had had my chances and things weren't really working out, but I still wanted to play. So I put a summer in working out here in Calgary. And was, I don't know, maybe it was because I was in Russia for the Worlds, but there's a lot of good leagues over in Europe. But I was just interested in the Russian League and I couldn't even really give you a, a reason why. That was the only place I wanted to play. So um, there was some interest from a team in Belarus in, in, in August. So I'm like, okay, perfect. So I'm like, I'll be ready to go here and wait, wait, wait. Now it's into September, it's the middle of September. I, I could have at least gone somewhere in a tryout, but I'm waiting for this contract. End of September, now they're not interested. And so I ended up, uh, my first year pro, my first two years pro when I was up in the NHL, my, uh, my D coach was Slava Fetisov, who's like a Russian legend. And I would love to know what that guy's worth today. He's like Putin's right-hand man, that guy. But anyways, I hadn't talked to him since I played for him. Maybe saw him once or twice, and I got a hold of his phone number and, and called him. And I just said, hey, Slava, it's Mike Commodore. He's like, oh, Misha, which is Mike in Russian. Uh, he's like, Misha. I'm like, Slava, I need a contract. He's like, okay, okay. I'm like, okay? He's like, yeah, okay. I get you a contract. Click. I'm like, next day, my agent gets a fax from Vladivostok. It's in the KHL. I just sign it. I'm good to go. And then I'm like, Vladivostok? I'm like, I've been to Russia, and I'm not, I'm not real worldly, but I kind of know. I've never heard of Vladivostok. So then I look at, I Google map it, and Vladivostok is literally on the Pacific Ocean right next to North Korea. So all of our travel was a minimum 10-hour flight. Like we were, I think we were 60, 60 kilometers from North Korea. So we, we played four games at home, four on the road, four games at home, four on the road. And so we'd be at home for, let's call it eight or 10 days, and then it would be, to start the road trip would be a 10-hour flight to Moscow, and then we'd go from there, whether it was stay in Moscow or go to Magnitogorsk or go out to Europe and play in Croatia. And yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. 
It was any kind of like superstition you had. I was never really superstitious, but like, oh, I need to have this before I play, or oh, I need to you take that and you throw it in the trash because you just get out there and play. Like, You're tired, you didn't sleep last night? Yeah, the Too rest bad. of us didn't either. Yeah. Shut up and play. Uh, it was interesting. It, it was a good way to tan things. Moral of the story, do your research, I That's guess. That's right, moral of the story, maybe take a minute. And, yeah. Although I guess the, the phones weren't really ringing off the hook, so I don't know what my options what were. But, yeah, yeah, that was, Vladivostok was my only option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick break and get back to the golf.